Hey, hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to Bats from the Grave presents Storytime with Bat. We may have found a new title for it by now, I'm not sure. Maybe we'll stick with that. Anyway, today's uh, story was written. Yes, yeah, written. It's not um, one of the fictitious ones. Uh, but it was written a long time ago. Well, like late last year. I just finished writing it, and. Uh, well, this, this story is called My Art Style my art life and I probably won't be on screen a lot but uh, either way I hope you enjoy I'll see you after the video ever since I was a child I loved cartoons and I used to find watching my animated friends was a great way to escape the trials of a childhood like mine I used to really look forward to Saturday mornings, and on weekdays I couldn't wait for Northwest Afternoon to end so I could watch Scooby-Doo. You know, this was because Mom's soaps would finally be over. When I was growing up in the early 1980s, there was no shortage of cartoons and animated sagas. To be fair, first, there is no denying that by today's standards, we didn't have a ton to work with. There was no cartoon network, and Nickelodeon was just taking off, and even that required a complicated cable system. I mean, Disney was around, but it lacked an official channel at that point, and when that finally did happen, you needed the aforementioned cable system. And second, it is important to note that a lot but not all of the animated series from that era fell into one of two general styles silly and serious. I'm going to be using both modern and classic references to convey this example. Silly cartoons are shows like Cow and Chicken, Fat Albert, Tom and Jerry, Looney Tunes, Woody Woodpecker, Amazing World of Gumpal, Scooby-Doo, and Yogi Bear. While serious cartoons are more along the lines of shows like Thundercats, Dragon Ball, Samurai Jack, G.I. Joe, Gem and the Holograms, Ben 10, He-Man, Spider-Man, Voltron, and even the SWAT Cats. But I guess if you haven't figured it out yet, I favored the silly cartoons. There was just something about the whimsy, the abstract freedom displayed by the characters on screen, the way they could break our reality and replace it with a world where anything was possible. Now, I was always smart enough to know that I couldn't lift a 10-ton anvil or drop a boulder on my friend's head off a cliff and expect them to walk away springing like an accordion and plotting how they'll get me back. I also knew dynamite was not a toy. Most of us kids back then didn't need to be restricted or warned not to do anything we had seen in cartoons. We just knew better. They were cartoons. We just knew better. Anyway, I also enjoyed a fair amount of the more serious titles. I really enjoyed Captain N the Game Master, Captain Planet, the original Transformers, and of course, my personal favorite cartoon of all time, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Cowbunga dudes! I really adored the classic squash and stretch cartoons of the 70s, 80s, and early 90s. These wondrous visual feasts would prove to be an inspiration to my future goals. As I grew up, the styles of these animations changed, evolved, and adapted to the era they were fitted for. Some shows would fade off into the animation afterlife, while others would unfortunately be reborn later on. If H.P. Lovecraft has taught us anything, it's that some things are better off having lived and died than being, dare I, reanimated? No, I won't apologize for that joke. Early on I noticed a trend that started before we even started complaining about it, and with this trend not everything would survive its transition. That trend is called rebooting. It has been done multiple times over the years, and people used to pay it no mind. But I did, and I may come off as somewhat of a hipster. Yeah man, I noticed the problem with reboots before the world saw the problem with it, and oh oh oh, and I didn't like the idea before it was cool not to like it, so yeah. No, that's not me. But I decided back when I was a little kid that I had two goals in life. I wanted to do two very specific things. Number one, I wanted to run a toy slash antique store that sold collectibles, and I wanted to make cartoons and comic books. So as soon as I could read, I started reading comics and watching every episode of all my favorite shows when they were on television. 
As kids back then, we didn't have cell phones, no YouTube, and no internet, so I spent all of my TV time observing techniques, studying the lines, how they work, how they were designed, and how characters can move in the ways that they do. I started to learn how to structure a story, how to treat the characters as puppets, and over time, this would become a passion of mine. But also, after a while I realized while some of these shows changed with the times, like Scooby-Doo, a pup named Scooby-Doo, Yogi Bear, Yo-Yogi, and the Flintstones, the Flintstone Kids, of all things, can I just say, Yo-Yogi sucked. Like, bad. And speaking of the Flintstone Kids, they also tried to make a reboot system that would be very hard to argue with back then as it was a new concept. And this trend was taking the reboot quite literally. Yep, you guessed it, almost everything in the 80s got turned into babies. With what seemed like the blink of an eye, these babies would be springing up all over our television channels in shows like Muppet Babies, Flintstone Kids, Tom and Jerry Kids, Pink Panther and the Sons, and some of the other ones just seemed to be there for no reason and didn't bring anything worth making to the table. Of course I'm talking about the almighty reboot. The one reason to make cartoons that I hate more than anything else. The Adventures of Money, the How to Make Money by Being Unoriginal show, or my personal favorite, How to Make Money and Lose Fans, the I Have No Soul Saga Ultima X13B version 3, Babies. I knew right away this was not something I wanted to be a part of and wanted to create something new. I wanted to make something original, never before seen or written, while at the same time bringing something to life that, while 100% original, will also pay homage to the shows that shaped my tastes and inspired me. This goal would last my entire life. Flash forward and here I am, a middle-aged man from nowhere Washington state, so let's see where I'm at now and then see where I plan on going. It's the end of 2023 and I've spent a lot of time checking out the cartoons from the last 20 years and for the most part, I'm just uninspired. There are a few I love, but again, the post 2000 shows are either terrible or just happen to exist and I pay them no mind either way. But there are some really great ones, don't get me wrong. For example, I am a huge fan of The Amazing World of Gumball. So I started looking into what is selling and what critics are not liking, and well, I decided to go in a different direction. I'm going to try to work with my limited production crew, and I'm going to try to make a pilot for an original animated series. We aren't totally ready to release all the details yet, but as of lately, we started training on animation software and digital design, but I digress. It was the shows of my childhood coupled with modern storytelling techniques, I'm looking at you Gravity Falls and Amazing World of Gumball, that helped form my artistic style. I'm heavily inspired by All Real Monsters, Rocco's Modern Lives, and the teachings of Christopher Hart, an awesome author who writes how to draw books and they are amazing. Basically I took inspiration from my favorite artists and created my own style. One more time for emphasis, my own style, something totally unique. As far as why I love these so much, I just like the styles, the way the stories are told, and the way they're presented. I should also note that I've always been heavily inspired by other television shows like Gilligan's Island, Ernest P. Worrell's Adventures, played by the late and great Jim Varney, The Monsters, The Addams Family, F Troop, and The Monkees. As I said, I was an 80s kid. As for the ideas we have come up with for our three animation show pitches, they are all 100% unique, never before tried, and original. We do research to ensure that none of the jokes or plot points have ever been done before, unless of course it's a quick homage or in-joke, but those will be more than obvious. Rest assured, all of our influences play a part in the creation of these pitches, which we will reveal at later dates when they're closer to completion. But I wouldn't set any reminders as these pitches are still in their infant phases, with minimal design and only a very base plotline. Anyway, I know this was a bit of a ramble, and I just wanted to give you all a chance to kind of get to know me a little bit, because if you're going to subscribe, we're going to be spending some time together. So I figured I'd share with you where my art style came from and a little bit about who I am. And I guess I'd say my art style comes from the heart. 
I don't really do art commissions, but I do take suggestions. So if you'd like me to draw something for you, and no guarantees, drop it in the comment section and maybe I'll draw it for a video of drawing it. Eh. Well, that's about all I had planned for this one, and like I said, this was written a while back. Um, thanks for hanging out with me, I guess. I hope maybe you learned a little bit more about me and why I'm the way I am. Obviously, I didn't have a lot of friends growing up and stuff, so um, even nowadays, I'm still a bit of a shut-in. I think I got like three friends. I'm okay with that, though. It's not a complaint. Anyway, um... I got a whole bunch more stories coming, and I hope to see you in future videos. Um, I'm Bats. This has been Bats in the Grave, story time with Bats, my art style, my art life, and we'll see you in the next one. As usual, think for yourselves, be excellent to each other, and of course, keep it creepy. Smile at somebody, you just might make their day. And remember, we do what we do for you, whether you like it or not. Hey, thanks for checking out our video. If you enjoyed this one and would like to see more of our weird, creepy, odd, eccentric, or strange content as soon as it comes out, please feel free to click like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more. We'll see you later. Keep it creepy.